Welcome, and thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to make this a part of your day. Just to take a few minutes to put your focus back into the Word of God. Today we're going to look at a passage in Acts chapter 4. We're going to be thinking about the way that we should be as Christians today to bring the message of Christ to the world. We act like we have a lot of options when we uh, look at the way the world acts and the way we should respond to the world, but there's really only one plan, and that plan is Jesus Christ. And we see that in Acts chapter 4, and we're going to start reading in verse 8. The Bible says, Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to the rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame, and you're asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing there with them, there was nothing they could say. So they ordered them to withdraw from the Sanhedrin and then conferred together. What are we going to do with this men, these men, they asked. Everyone living in Jerusalem knows they have performed a notable sign and we cannot deny it. But to stop this thing from spreading any further among the people, we must warn them to speak no longer to anyone in this name. Then they called them in again and commanded them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John replied, which is right in God's eyes, to listen to you or listen to him? You be the judges. As for us, we cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. You know, a lot of times when we are planning something, whether it's a trip or whatever it might be, a lot of times we'll talk about having a backup plan, a plan B. And again, when the early church was getting started, there, there was only one pl plan, to preach the message of Jesus. In the act of being saved, there's only one plan. The only plan is Jesus. There is no plan B. Jesus uh, said that uh, there is no other name in heaven. In John chapter 14 and verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but by me. And in Acts chapter 4, we get to see how Jesus' plan worked through the lives of Peter and John. And we can see how it's supposed to be played out in the lives, I think, of every believer. And keep in mind, that these men were being intimidated. They were talking to the same religious leaders who'd put them in jail the night before, and they were preaching publicly about Jesus' resurrection from the dead. And the Bible says that because of that preaching, 5,000 people believed. So what I want us to do very quickly is look at these two men and what they did and see what we can learn from these guys because we want to be more productive as disciples, or I would assume we would want to be. And one of the first things you see right away is you have to have the Holy Spirit. I think the writer of Acts wants us to know in verse 8 that Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit before he addressed those religious leaders. And that's the key to every ministry. We're not anything without the empowering of God through the Holy Spirit. We can't redeem anyone from their sin, but through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can become the mouthpieces of God to bring the message to the people that God wants them to hear. But I think we also see here that we have to know the gospel message. You know, it's obvious that Peter understood what he was saying. He wasn't concerned about <laughs> being politically correct, as we would say today, or offending his audience. He was much more concerned about speaking the truth and defending the honor of Jesus. And in verse 12, he gave them the bottom line. He, no holds barred. He said, there's no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. We have to be willing to do the same thing that Peter and John did, to speak the truth and take a stand for Jesus. 
And that means that as believers, we need to be prepared and willing to share our testimonies. You know, if a person is genuinely saved, knowing your story is a no-brainer. Our stories are an amazing way to help people see how God works in the world today. We should know the basics of the gospel message. And you know, a simple and time-tested approach is what a lot of people call the Roman road. And it goes basically like this. You're talking to someone, and they say, what does it mean to be saved? And you say, well, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible tells us that all of us have sinned. That includes me and you and everybody. And because of that, in Romans 6, 23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Why do we even have to die? Well, it's being paid the wages that we've earned. But there's a hopeful statement in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, that says, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And because of that, in Romans chapter 10, verse 9, the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that includes everybody, because Romans 10, 13 says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's basically it. That's what we call the Roman road. The bottom line is, though, we don't have to be ashamed of the gospel, and we ought to be sharing it every chance that we get. Because another thing we see here is that we, we have to learn to give this faith away. Notice in verse 13, it says that when they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished, and they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Maybe the religious leaders remembered that Peter and John had been with Jesus for several years. Or maybe it was because they spoke with the power of the Holy Spirit. And it was as if Jesus was right there with them again. The bottom line is we have to be the message to the world. You can't separate Jesus' message from the man he presented himself to be while he was in the world. And something else. We shouldn't be scared no matter what threats are thrown at us. In 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, the Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of timidity, but a spirit of power, of love, and self-discipline. Even though the religious leaders tried to intimidate Peter and John, they stood their ground, and they refused to be quiet. And that's something we need to learn, too. We should never be silent. Even when Peter and John were treated the way they were by the religious leaders, they never backed down. In fact, in verses 19 and 20, they told those men, they said, Judge for yourselves whether it is right in God's eyes to obey you rather than God. They said, We cannot help speaking about what we have seen and heard. You know, the problem today is that too many Christians have stopped speaking about the love and forgiveness of Christ. They're silent, and there's no good reason for it. But just like Peter and John, the church has to be willing to stand up and bring the message of Jesus Christ to a hurting world. The Bible says when they were released, they weren't afraid or shaken up. They were thankful that they had had that opportunity to take a stand for Jesus. And in Acts chapter 4, in verse 31, it says that after they prayed... The place where they were meeting was shaken, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the Word of God boldly. That's what we ought to be doing. As believers, we have to do what they were doing. We have to have the Holy Spirit. There's no way around it. You need to know the gospel message, and you need to be willing to give that faith away. Don't be scared, and don't be silent. Let God work through you. You may not think God can do it, but God will do it if you'll allow him to do it. Why not do that today? Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you again for the blessing of being used by you. We know that there's nothing we've done that's earned it, but we're thankful today that you would use us in spite of who we are. Lord, I pray for everyone within the sound of my voice that you'll speak to their heart and lead them to serve you in a way that will ultimately 
further the kingdom of God and bring honor and glory to Jesus Christ. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.